welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we came across a very interesting puzzle. Uh, this was sent in and uh, we were asked to have a look at it. And one of the things that is very, very unusual about this puzzle is that you can stare at the geometry of the opening position and spot something really quite lovely. And we get a lot of questions on the channel actually about the swordfish technique um, and we have done a few videos covering it and the question normally result, revolves around somebody saying well I sort of understand it but you know I've never been able to find a swordfish you know th these things must be so difficult to spot how do you really go about spotting them without computer assistance well I think this puzzle is as close as you'll come to um, an easy swordfish spot if there is such a thing and the lovely thing about this is that you can spot it immediately um, now I'm not going to claim that this puzzle is brutally difficult actually because if you go to standard technique and do it that way you'll, you'll be able to do it it's not brutally difficult but there is an opportunity to make fast progress with the soul by thinking about swordfishes so how would we go about sort of using these, these odd patterns, these square patterns around the grid to find something interesting? Well, what you might start by looking at is the uh, these interesting runs of threes in, in these positions here and these positions here. And you notice a common number. There's a three in both of those, uh, both of these strings. And that means that the positions that we can place threes in certain columns of the grid is really, really restricted. So let's think about it firstly on the left hand side. Where can we place a three in column one? Well, it could go here, it could go here, and it could go here. And let's do the same on column two. And because we've got this symmetrical arrangement, we get exactly the same pattern down column two. Now let's just move over to the right hand side of the grid and look at column 9 for example. Where can we place 3's in column 9? Here we're even more restricted. We can place a 3 here. There can't be a 3 here because there's already a 3 in this block. And there could be a 3 here. So we have this arrangement of 3's in those 3 columns. And this, what is this? This is a swordfish. Because now we can say with certainty that however we arrange the 3's you know, whether this turns out to be the real three, or this is the real three, or this is the real three, however we arrange these threes, we will find that in the final solution, um, rows two, rows five, and rows eight will not be able to contain threes in any other positions than the threes are shown on the grid. Now, I'm going to uh, uh, do my due diligence here and show you um, exactly what I mean. So let's firstly imagine that this is the three. There are three possible positions for threes in column one. Let's imagine this is the three. What's the effect of that? Well you can see immediately that forces a three down here and now there's only one place for a three in column two. So we'd end up with the threes like this. Well what happens if this isn't the three then? What about if this is the three instead? Um, well in this, if this is the three, again now we have an x-wing on threes. Um, because the three in columns two and columns nine are, you know, for example, if this is the three, this would be forced to be a three, and if this is the three, this will be a forced to be a three. So either of those versions, no more threes possible in the, in the rows that I've mentioned. And similarly, if instead this is the three down here, we sort of get at the inverse of when this was the three, so that would force that to be a three and that to be a three again. So in all of these situations we're able to eliminate threes as I said from the rest of these rows. Now, one immediate consequence of that is that um, this square here will be forced to be a three because we have a three here we know one of these two cells will be forced to be a three uh, we have a three here so the three is forced into this cell and I suppose another immediate deduction that we can make off the back of that is where where can we now place threes in row three and row seven? Well, um, in row three, the three could either be here or here, and in row seven, the three can either be here or here. Um, so 
a really unusual and beautiful opening pattern. And how might we make progress from here? Well, I suppose we could note there's a one here and a one here, so this will have to be a one. And then we might note that if we look at this one, three, eight combination and compare it with the four, five, and the seven in row three, um, these three cells are going to have to be 4, 5, and 7 in some order. The 5, 4 here will mean that this has to be a 7. Uh, and therefore we're looking at 2, 6, 9 into these cells. Then we have a 2 here and a 2 here. This can't be a 2 because of these 2, so the 2 will be forced up to the top there. And then we could do, we can do other tricks. If we now look at column seven, there's um, there's something interesting about that now. Um, if we ask ourselves about the numbers four, five, and seven, you can see something interesting going on. So obviously, we can't have four, five, and seven in this square. We can't actually have 4, 5, and 7 in this square either, because we have a 4 and a 5 and a 7 here. So this is not 4, 5, or 7. This is not 4, 5, and 7, because we have 4, 5, 7 there. And it's harder to see, but, but this can't be 4, 5, or 7 either, because we have a similar sort of symmetrical arrangement regarding the numbers 1, 2, and 8 here. You can see... we've actually got that going on because of this 1, 2 and 8 here. So that means that these cells here are 5, 7, 9, 5, 7, 9. So again, 4, 5 and 7 not possible in this square. So looking down column 7 now, we know that the 4, 5, 7 triple must be in the other three open positions. Which is, which is really rather nice. And from here, uh, I think the solve doesn't, you know, it, it becomes very, very achievable. So I just wanted to share this with you. I think this is a very unusual puzzle, uh, and I accept that. And, and I know that the, this sort of weird symmetry around the grid is not something that you'd see as a standard. But when you do see it, do look out for these unusual patterns because they can help you solve the puzzle more efficiently um, than the standard method and here we just we just ran straight in with the swordfish and were able to make some interesting observations in the grid so thanks for watching i hope this made sense i know that the swordfish video the swordfish technique it can can be a bit of a mental block for some people but it's really understandable and again this puzzle i think is a great way to appreciate what it's all about thanks for watching if you enjoyed the content please subscribe we appreciate that We'll be back soon with another edition of Crack and the Cryptic.